in the beginning was the command line. Now, some of you might recognize that as the opening line from Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash, um, where a computer hacker who is also a pizza delivery driver was going into a virtual world and becoming a war warrior prince trying to solve the puzzle of a virus. Hmm. Pizza, computers, and viruses. That sounds like a summary of my life these days. Now, there's been a lot of writing recently. The Washington Post just wrote an article about Silicon Valley is racing to build the next version of the internet, and it's called the metaverse. And for those of you that aren't aware of the concept of the metaverse, it's this constant on shared virtual uh, space. It's persistent. It's cross-platform, which means you can access it from anywhere. Um, it extends into the real world. It's got no limits on people. You can drop in, you can drop out, and it has real economy with jobs and shopping and media. Now, there have been some versions of that. Second Life is the one that most people hold to, um, but that was really a niche product for a niche market. And there have been games, Fortnite, which we're going to talk about, World of Warcraft, who have created these persistent always-on worlds, but they're not quite, um, they're not quite persistent and they're not scalable. You can only have like a hundred people on a server in Fortnite, for example. Now, one company that's trying to build the metaverse is Facebook, naturally. They want to have a billion people in virtual reality and they have a new product called Horizons. And it's in, in a beta and it should be launching any day now for the beta testers. And it's only going to be available for Quest and Rift to begin with. And one of the amazing things is they're creating world builder tools for collaboration. So people without software programming skills like me or creative skills like me can create their own experiences. And you can do that with your friends. You'll be able to create, one of the demos they show is a laser tag game. So I could get on here with Gordo from LaserStorm and Jim Kessler from LaserTron, and we could create the most amazing virtual laser tag arena in Facebook Horizons and open it up for the world. Now it's built on Unity, which is one of the bi two big game development platforms that seem to be dominating it. But they're trying to democratize Unity and make it in a way that anybody can use it. And so it's gonna be really fascinating to see what Facebook does with Horizons. Now Mozilla is also jumping into the, into the metaverse game with Mozilla Hubs. Now for those of you that don't know, Mozilla is the company that brings you the not-for-profit web. They say, you know, it's people over profit. Um, they tend to do things on an open source basis. They're the company that brought us Firefox and they're building the metaverse and they say the metaverse needs to be built on the web. They're saying all of these other things are built on the internet but they want to build the metaverse on the web. Now, my personal opinion of this is I don't see how it happens. I feel like this is another example of old paradigm thinking coming into a new paradigm world. And it's a, like with Web 1.0 taking brochures and trying to bring them online. I actually don't think Mozilla is on the right track, but we're going to watch them. And as always, I hope they're successful with whatever they do. Now, Fortnite is the closest thing that I think we've seen to a metaverse. Now, Fortnite has been exploding. Superdata suggests that they did $1.8 billion in revenue in 2019. Fortnite recently came up and said they're full of shit. Superdata doesn't know what they're talking about and that they're way off. And my guess is that Superdata is massively underestimating the revenue of Fortnite. Now, because Fortnite is crossing over to all kinds of things. So last year we saw the Avengers movie um, and Thanos mode brought to Fortnite to, um, to promote Avengers Endgame. We also saw the big Star Wars reveal in Fortnite where the Emperor revealed himself and they gave everybody lightsabers and all of a sudden lightsabers was a weapon and you had you know different Star Wars characters that you could become in Fortnite. And it's not just movies. Last year, the biggest music event of the year was Marshmallow doing a live concert from stage in Fortnite. 10 million people live showed up in game, 27 million more views on Twitch, and who knows how many hundreds of millions of views on various platforms like YouTube. Now, this year, the biggest media event of the year, in my opinion, was Travis Scott's Fortnite concert. Right? Marshmallow was a one-time event. Travis Scott did five versions of his astronomical 
event across five different time zones so everybody around the world could participate live. And I know that some people did it multiple times because it was so phenomenal. Now, as social media exploded, attendance grew for each event too. And this is the future of virtual event marketing. Um, it used to be you would launch an event and then the minute that event started, you started promoting next year's event. One of the things that I saw, see in my show is that the further on we go in the show, the higher the attendance goes because people see it, people share it. You did remember to share and like, right? And then other people see it and they jump in. And so Travis Knight, Travis Scott and Fortnite changed the way we're going to see events and then we're going to promote events. Now, he used this to launch a new apparel line and a new track with Kid Cudi called The Scots. So music companies are getting into this and seeing the opportunity to create all new events. Now, one of the challenges with Fortnite and events was highlighted by Andrew Webster for The Verge, who wrote, at the end of the Fortnite, it was the concert. It was very jarring to finish watching Travis Scott. Only immediately dropped into a bloodbath. And one of the reasons that I struggle with Fortnite is I hang up, my, I hang, I hung up my controller ten years ago when my kids got better at Halo than I was, and I just kind of stopped playing first-person shooter games. So what Fortnite did is they created Party Royale because not everybody wants to battle. Now they're going to celebrate 350 million players in Fortnite. Later tonight, your time, later this morning, my time, I'll be jumping into Party Royale on Fortnite. I want you to join me there. And we're going to be checking out all the things that you can do shooting plungers at people um, instead of killing them and making them wait to respawn for 15 minutes. Now, Tim Sweeney is the CEO of Epic, which makes Fortnite and Unreal Engine upon which Fortnite is built. Now, he was quoted in a CNBC article where he predicted enterprise users of, Epic, of Unreal would overtake game users by the end of 2019. And industry-specific and entertainment uses will converge as part of a bigger digital industry. He said, the thing that really interests me is seeing visual assets cross over between different media giving us an example of a model creating to use an architectural firm that could be dropped into an entertainment experience. Now, an example of that is Star Wars Mandalorian. Now, John Favreau is changing the way movies are made. He's the guy that brought did The Lion King in virtual reality from a production standpoint. And now he's using virtual sets with giant LED screens and these environments built in Unreal Engine to make the realism higher than green screen and chroma key. Um, and the cost is actually lower and production is faster. And it's fascinating how Unreal is penetrating all of these entertainment markets. Now, so what's it all mean? There are 7 million developers using Unreal Engine. Hollywood movies are using it to make more reliable, uh, more believable movies and make them more affordable. Architects are designing buildings in it and using it for virtual walkthroughs. Um, Sony Mil Music is now hiring a team to work on the intersection of games and music in Unreal Engine. They've just posted want ads for Unreal developers, including game level designers. Now, this is Sony Music, mind you. Soon, the entire creative world would be working in Unreal. And one key concept of the metaverse is the connection between the virtual and the physical. Right? And so architects building buildings in Unreal that wind up in these virtual worlds. Now, Fortnite won't be the metaverse. It's a proof of concept. It'll be one land in a meta metaverse. And Epic will create the hooks to tie in all of these virtual worlds that all of these creatives are building together. Just in the last year, We've seen VR games from Respawn making the new Medal of Honor game for Oculus, End Dreams doing Phantom Covert Ops. Check out my interview um, last week on that game. ILM X Labs Vader Immortal, as well as multi platform games like Gears of War 5, Borderlands 3, Ace Combat 7, and the remake of System Shock, all built in Unreal Engine 4. And so imagine one metaverse where you can move seamlessly from game to game, world to world, story to story, building to building, and integrating Hollywood and music and gaming and even architecture. Now you weave in retail and work and education and you have the metaverse. Now does that sound familiar? Now I'm not saying Epic is going to win the battle to build the metaverse or that they'll even be one winner in that fight. 
there very well could be multiple metaverses and maybe eventually they'll all connect or maybe they'll all be acquired by Facebook who's acquired Instagram and WhatsApp and Oculus and trying to turn those into one giant megaverse. They even tried to buy Unity last year, as was disclosed by Blake Harris in his book, The History of the Future. Now, with a $15 billion valuation for Unreal, rumored, um, and Facebook's $600 billion valuation and $50 billion in cash and printing more every day, they could easily afford to acquire Unreal. It's going to be fascinating to watch and to play. And speaking of playing, don't forget Party Island later today or tonight, wherever you are.